No success has ever come from the top. It is always from the bottom up. Being that you work with people, right? How prevalent is um how prevalent is sexual abuse in the community? Oh my goodness. It's not talked about enough. We um, we should have a rally just for that, like it was Black Lives Matter. I'm sure if we talk about sexual abuse in the community, even especially in my, now, I was working in the entertainment business. It's it's crazy. Like I said, again, it's from people that you know, and I and I have personal, I have my experience with that on numerous occasions, whether I was being abused at the events I was working at from people that. Um, possibly wanted to work with me as a um, event planner or as someone that did was like a, a booking agent for artists. I was definitely abused by a few of them, you know. Even other other um, promoters, you know. It's 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 and a lot of people don't speak up about it. And this is why I'm happy to be that voice because I'm I'm actually currently going through something um, in the same way. You know, being abused by someone that I trusted, that was my friend, that was a business partner at one time. We did events together and he completely violated me. So, it, and then when I'm speaking up about it, I'm hearing other people's story. And I'm like, we have to do better coming together. Like like what you're doing right now, it's a, it's so essential because you'll, you'll probably hear a lot more people speak up like, oh, well, this happened to me, that happened to me. But when we don't talk about it, we're not able to help each other, to warn each other in a way, too, on who these people are. When if you go to the police station and, you, you know, you have a, a complaint report, you know, if it, if, if it goes through, you know, if, if charges can be pressed, you know, they would have to um, they would have to sign up as a sex offender or something like that. But when they don't go to when it doesn't go to that point, you know, nobody knows about it. And they're they're kind of kept it, it becomes a, a kept secret and it's not fair you know to the person that is experiencing it that experienced it you know and I'm, but it, it's, it's happening way it's, it's it's happening more often than i even knew you know just because i'm speaking up like i said i deal with community complexity that includes telling my story and when i have been telling my story i'm hearing and i'm just like it's so disappointing it's it's, it's, it's hurting because it's like where do we go like what, what what are we gonna do you know what, what else do we need to do i'm glad you said that because um what 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 i noticed is that you have certain groups within the the subculture like you'll call it a cultural group or a religious group but what i noticed is that those groups have a high rate of abuse too you would figure that you know the abuse would be different in and the, the Rastafarian like, community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a big thing. I mean, and you know what, what's ironic about that is I can think about three situations since I moved back to Brooklyn that, and all of those people that I've had physical issues with um, were people that said they're, they're Rastafarian or Bubu Shanti's and all of these things. And, and so it kind of, took me by surprise because my when I'm focused on business, that's it. You know, um, anybody that worked with me before would know that, you know? Um, so if I'm, I'm thinking about events, fashion shows, or whatever I'm thinking about, and then this person just kind of grab you and pull you aside to slam you to a wall because they feel like you're not, you're not giving them sexual attention. And I'm like, I didn't even know that that's where their mind was, you know? So I had to learn the hard way of just being a woman in this business that some men, it don't matter how good you are at a certain thing, they still looking at you <laughs> as what they can get from you in a physical way. Do, 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 you, find, do you find it that, that that makes it harder to actually plead your, plead your case because most people might see those people as progressive and say that those people might not be doing any form of wrongs to you or, or whatever? Exactly, exactly, because guess what? that's what predators do. If you do your research, not even only in the Rastafarian community, but other cultures too, um, a lot of the people that have been predators are people that are in so-called, you know, high status in the community or or have a certain image, you know, especially if you want to only look at social media, 
you know, um, and they have a certain image to where people can say, oh, well, that they never did that to me, so I don't believe her. Or, you know, they'll come up with all kinds of things to protect that person um, because they just, because they never experienced it. But that's actually a strategic, you know, that's, that's a tactical uh, um, strategy from people that are predators. Because even the ones that had violated me also were protectors at one time, you know? They were also ones that I would look at and be like, no, this person protected me. Or this person, um, you know, made sure I was always aware of looking out for people. And then at my most vulnerable state, they attacked me in that way. And I think a lot of people, a lot of men and maybe women, I haven't heard too many men complaining about being abused. Um, well, I know a few, but um, not to the you know extent of the women. I think a lot of the men don't even understand what abuse is or what rape is because when I explain it back, like they just they don't. It's not connecting to them when a woman is not interested or when they say no. Like sometimes they can just feel like um, they can convince them or something yeah, that kind of what they want is, 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 is what it should be. You know, I remember one brother locked me in his car one time after an event because he thought that going to the event, trying to promote him wasn't enough, I guess. He thought it had to have been something else. And I was confused because I'm like, what did we do that made you so confused? You know, we're not having these discussions. We're not, you know, I'm. it doesn't matter what you even wear. You can be dressed down. I, I could wear my Adinkra symbols, you know, I can... It look as cultural as possible. I can pump my fist on my... And they still would have this mindset that they would want to break you down, you know? And, and yeah, so most of them are people that have um, a certain following on social media and people might not want to even believe that they would do something like that. But I, I have personal experience with it, you know, where that's not the image they put out. So some people only deal with media that's, that's what feeds their intellect and it would be very difficult for them to understand another woman's experience and that's why we're very much divided with, with supporting each other with that topic yeah, I, I, I find that I find that this this whole conversation is somewhat tied into a reason that, that we're going to do about the celebrity worship and not celebrity just as in the fact that most people are are known across the world but known within their community are known within their sector are known within within whichever um environment that they're in most people tend to believe that there's a big double standard whereas they can get a pass at doing certain things but when it comes to a person who is ordinary that person is looked down and are thrown up and and i think that that's one of the main things that we need to get rid of and it's become a part of our social norms and it's kind of doing playing us as human beings in a general sense you know definitely you know and 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 sometimes that's their plan is to make sure they have a certain image so when they choose to attack they feel like that's their that's their mo to people it's like no nah, that person would never do anything like that and that's just what predators do you know they they pray they pray and sometimes on the strongest people you know and 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 the, the sad part is they can pray on you for years because honestly um the situations i've been in were people that i knew for a very long time very long, like people like I would even consider my family, you know, and and I think that 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 hurts the, the most because then it's like, who do you trust, you know? Who do you go to when now there's a person in a certain status in the community has done something, and you know, it's one thing to be trying to get justice, but then the healing that you need to go through for yourself is a whole nother energy, and I think that one is even more important than letting everybody know what's going on because I wouldn't be able to sit here right now if I didn't spend a lot of time going through a lot of um, self-help or or talking to certain people to help me to keep my, to keep me sane, you know? And that's why I deal with community complexity because we have to get together and have these discussions and to know where can I go to talk about this, you know? Um, well, and then sometimes being afraid for your life, like there's no protection. They, a lot of people are in this mindset that only the police are predators, but sometimes that's where women like me, that's the only place we can go. 
you know, they're going to show up when you call. <laughs> I mean, all of them aren't always showing up doing the right thing. But I can say the ones that showed up for me have treated me with more care than the people that I that I know that attack me. The question I have is that um, I know this with a lot of the teenage girls, especially if they experience something, they're like totally cut off towards men. They have such disdain towards men. What advice would you give them in regards to being open to having a relationship with a man and building with a man? Oh my goodness. First, they gotta build with themselves. They have to. It starts within us because it's, it's, it's the, the healing process, like really re forgiving ourselves. Because especially if you've been violated by someone you know and you're gonna be scrutinized by the community if it's someone in a celebrity status, um, you have to now forgive yourself that you put yourself in that situation to be that vulnerable that you call someone your friend. And as a teenager, um, I know of a few people that go to schools or were going to schools to, to talk to children about being raped by their friends and, and, and or how to support a friend that's been raped um, or abused, you know, because I was a teenager going through, so I was going through domestic violence situations. Um, again, it's, it, it, it starts from within, but you have to find people that you can relate to to go through it with you um, because you can't relate to to a man that didn't do anything to you unless you really let go of all of the energy that you received from someone that violated you it's not the same you know and it's a battle but it's a battle within yourself honestly and i'm just saying because i go through it from being molested abused and raped i go through it still i'm 38 you know but i remember being a teenager that um, was still trying to have friends, even though I was violated by this one or that one. But all the ones that I chose to really trust, especially if you're okay, if you were molested young or raped or abused young, and you're still looking for that male figure to protect you, and then that's the person that keeps violating you, it could become a bad cycle. I mean, I'm not a psychologist. They could probably explain it a little more when then you, you, you probably get wrapped up in that cycle of only staying with people that's going to abuse you you know, that could become dangerous, you know, not understanding that they're doing something wrong and that you have to fix something within yourself now after experiencing that without blaming yourself or forgiving, forgiving yourself. Because I have to do it now. I have to forgive myself now, you know, as a, as a grown woman to say that wasn't my fault. And I've already had some, a few people say to me what I did wrong because I trusted someone. You know, so as a teenager that's still going through development, we, we, we're always still going through development while we're here anyway. Um, definitely find an outlet. And it's not easy. I've went to therapy I, and I've had therapists that cried when I told them just even what I was going through with my oldest daughter. So I'm like, if I can't even talk to them about being a parent with special needs, I'm going to talk to them about everything else. So, I, you know, if you can't find someone to relate to, <laughs> no matter what their title is, you know, you could feel alone. So I just hope and I pray and I, I meditate on any, uh, those teenagers that they can find someone or, or the strength within themselves to create what's not even there. Because I have to do it sometimes. If, if they don't think someone is there and they know that, you know what, I have to speak up and be that creator, you know, find your purpose and, I, and, and to know that we don't go through anything for nothing at all and it couldn't be hard it can seem like that but after you find that strength within yourself you can definitely help someone else that feels like they're going to commit suicide because they think they're just going to continue to be abused and molested from people that they care about well let me hear you say my